Welcome to Know Your Rights, New Jersey. I'm your host, Reinald Lamar Ponder. Today, seniors are facing enormous challenges under this difficult economy. More specifically, older homeowners who have a significant amount of equity in their homes are facing the prospect of losing those homes due to foreclosures. Today, we're going to discuss reverse mortgages, one of the solutions to the problems being faced by older homeowners who want to hold on to their home. The information available regarding reverse mortgages is complex and sometimes contradictory. So today we hope to gain a better understanding of what a reverse mortgage is and when it might be a viable solution. And to help us today, we are fortunate to have with us Sandra Rostick, who is an expert in FHA mortgages. Sandra's been in government lending for 29 years and she currently runs the Senior Solutions Workshop in cooperation with local banks. She has saved herself 70 homes using reverse mortgages and she teaches a course on reverse mortgages to the New Jersey Bar Association. Welcome, Sandra. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us. Let's start with uh, you giving us a picture of the problems that seniors are facing today. Well, seniors are um, they're losing their houses for very small mortgages. Uh, as you said, most of them have substantial amounts of equity in their house, but as you're in your 60s and your 70s trying to make ends meet on Social Security, it's very difficult to make a mortgage payment. And it's very difficult to handle urgent situations that come up. So they wind up taking an equity line uh, on the house to fix the roof or different repairs. Mm -hmm. And then those loans have monthly payments right. that they, they're just getting behind. It, they get a little bit deeper and deeper each year because their monthly income is not enough to cover everything. And, you know, a lot of them are in houses that are very large. They haven't downsized. They've been in their house for 40, 50 years, and they want to stay in their house uh, oftentimes. So they're, they're getting behind on mortgages that are 40, 50, $60,000 with no way to get out of them. Mm -hmm. And even more common, they're getting behind on real estate taxes. Right. New Jersey has some of the highest real estate taxes in the nation. And, um, you know, if you are on Social Security, even to uh, husband and wife Social right. Security, how do, you, how do you keep up with 2500 a quarter? It's really, really difficult. So um, they're losing their houses to both mortgage foreclosure and tax foreclosure. So there are a number of solutions. Talk to us a little bit about loan modification and bankruptcy as viable solutions from your perspective. Well, um, you know, the bankruptcy option is, is a good option when you have a lot of debt and when you don't have a huge amount of equity because when you do have too much equity, oftentimes you can't negotiate with the trustee. They'll, they'll just want you to sell the house. So a lot of seniors don't qualify for bankruptcy, but that's definitely something that they should look at first. Right. You know, I tell seniors, you need to meet with an attorney because if, if you're getting complaints in the mail, they need to be answered. You need to get the advice of a, a, specifically a bankruptcy attorney when you're in trouble. Do you find that uh, seniors, like everyone else, ignore the complaints when they come in? Yeah, yeah. They, they're not even opening them. I mean, unless they're served by the sheriff, and, and, and when they're served by the sheriff, it's usually a lot later than it should be. They need to open that mail and answer that complaint within 30 days often. So. And, and one of the things we try to get viewers to understand is that time is on their side until they make an enemy. That's and they right. make an enemy by ignoring the problems. That's right, that's right. So uh, they're being foreclosed on for very small mortgages and they're letting that go and go and go. When, you know, there is, there are different solutions for the problem. Um, the taxes, it, it seems that you can go behind on your taxes sometimes up to five years without getting any kind of a complaint. Other than a tax sale notice where they auction it off to somebody who pays your debt and is charging you interest, they will they could just let that go on for five or six years until the total bill that, you, that they have to pay, pay off is $70,000. Who has $70,000? Right. So, you know, they get themselves in a situation by waiting too long. So tell us a little bit about loan modification. Is that also a viable solution to Yeah, I, you seniors? know, there, there are a lot of scammers out there that, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, that's been going on for years. It's less and less now because there are government agencies that now provide assistance. Uh, there's 
one particular agency. It's called the Hope Preservation Foundation. Mm -hmm. And you can find it online. You can uh, call. They have an 888 number, toll-free, 888-995-HOPE, H-O-P-E. And they, they're government counselors across the country that will help you put together your application for a loan modification. And, you know, a lot of seniors, they don't have access to computers or a typewriter or right. anything. So um, these government counselors are really very helpful in putting the information together, and they will submit it to the lender directly. Okay. So there's a direct conduit. There's no disconnect there, which was uh, is, a, is currently still a big problem. Um, just getting the information to the right person is difficult, right? <laughs> but <laughs> even is. more difficult for seniors is a, being approved for the loan modification. This is the biggest problem. Right. If you're on Social Security, the HAMP, um, the Home Affordable Modification Program, or HARP, they, they require that your monthly income be sufficient so that your debt doesn't exceed 31% of your monthly debt. And when you're on Social Security, maybe that's only five or $600. In New Jersey, that's the taxes. Right. You know, so what happens is you can apply for the loan modification, you can get the free help from the Preservation Foundation, and you can still just be denied. And you're back to square one. Now, are, are you saying that seniors are also facing the difficulty of the loan modification process taking too long? Because uh, the longer the loan modification process uh, is extended, they're also missing payments. That's right. Typically. They're getting deeper and deeper, too. Um, I, I have some customers that, and, and all seniors, you know, are my customers, mm -hmm. but um, I have some customers that are put on temporary loan modifications where they only have to pay $1,500 for 12 months, and then they get a piece of paper in the mail that says their payment went to 2800 because they weren't paying the full principal and interest payment for the 12 months. It, you know, it was a temporary loan modification, and I, I think it's a way for lenders just to get another 12 payments out of people, right, you right. know, and it, it really sets you back. And, and sometimes they're not paying their taxes, so they're getting behind on that, which is even more treacherous for them. Tell us a little bit about what, you, what you're seeing in terms of scammers. You mentioned it before, and loan modification uh, has been rife with scams. Uh, for a while, uh, but I thought that situation was changing. I, is it? It not? definitely is. the The government has passed new laws on who can handle loan modifications. You must have a debt adjuster's license or be an attorney to negotiate any kind of a debt. But prior to that passing, there were all kinds of people that were just trying to make ends meet themselves and look for a new uh, way to make money, and they were charging a thousand, two thousand dollars to put together the package to submit to the lender, and it, it just wasn't working. They, they weren't getting anywhere. They, they had no authority. They had authorizations signed by the borrower, but they were just not getting anywhere, and, and it was just a colossal waste of time. And, you know, the scammers would also go that extra step to put in a straw buyer. For those of you that don't know what a straw buyer is, it's somebody that might have good credit and qualifies for a loan and could qualify to buy your house. So they would sell it to this straw buyer that never intended to take over the house or live there, mm -hmm. and everybody would get some kind of a payoff mm -hmm. at the closing, and then the intent was to sell it back to the original owner, and that would never happen. And further, I mean, the owner would not be in a position to buy it back because they were in trouble to begin with. Right. So, you know, you never, never, never want to sign documents, uh, and especially transfer title to your home without your attorney. Now, are there, Things that the senior home buyer should be aware of to identify the scams early on because these guys and gals who are perpetrating scams, they're really usually very nice people. Yeah, they're very, very charming. <laughs> very charming and very nice. So are there any factual things that they should be looking at? You mentioned one of them is if they're giving you a, a deed to sign over. <laughs> that, that's a telltale sign. But are there any other telltale signs? If they're asking you for money. That's, okay. a, that's a big red flag because you can get the help for free in, in legitimate ways unless you're going to an attorney, and I recommend it. You know, If you're going to spend any money, spend it with your attorney. And that's the same, uh, I guess to repeat what you're saying, that's the same for loan modification help. It's against, actually against rules, the law for uh, individuals who are purporting to do loan modifications to receive 
that three thousand five hundred right. up front right. that they they're not right. supposed to be getting any money. That's right. Uh, That's right. Unless they actually gave a service. That's right. And 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 if you can get the help of government counselors for free, why would you pay anybody to do it for you? Right. Um, there there's one um, company out in California that I just came across two or three clients, mm -hmm. they're taking money direct direct draft from their bank account every single month, and it's going nowhere. It's going nowhere into, except into their pockets. They, you know, they, they claim to be consolidating all of the borrower's debts right. and uh, negotiating and saving the money for the borrower and then making one lump sum to satisfy the judgments or the liens, and it never happens, so. Tell us about the two types of foreclosures that uh, the seniors are facing? Well, they're very different. There's a mortgage mm -hmm. foreclosure and there's a tax foreclosure. Okay. okay. Mortgage foreclosure is after you've been uh, delinquent on your mortgage more than 90 days usually, you'll get a letter in the mail. It's a notice of default. And at that point, that's where the foreclosure process would start. And lenders have been doing it much more quickly than they were for from years gone by because they're they're staffed now for mm -hmm. for defaults so that process it used to take an average of uh, 900 days to foreclose on a house right. in New Jersey but um, now as I understand it the ones that are being initiated now mm -hmm. correctly <laughs> Because the lenders were making a lot of mistakes, they were right. they were they weren't calculating the numbers right, and they had to start over. So that extended uh, the process a lot. But I understand that it's taking less time to be foreclosed on fully, go to auction, right. more like a year now. Okay. Um, and the the nice thing about the f mortgage foreclosure is you have a state mandated mediation. And that means that you have the right as a homeowner to be face to face with a representative from the bank and try to work things out. You also have the opportunity to apply for loan modifications. Many of the banks that took TARP money years gone by from the government to support this foreclosure market, they are required to follow certain guidelines. So you have opportunities to catch up. If Even if you can't catch up all six payments that you're behind on, they can roll that into a new term for you. They can extend the term, they can lower the interest rate, they can even put the arrearages at the back of the loan as a balloon. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of options when it comes to a mortgage foreclosure. The more treacherous, as I describe it, foreclosure is the tax foreclosure mm -hmm. because it's a it's very silent uh, way of operating. As I said, you can you can be behind as much as five or six years on your taxes before anybody bothers to try to take your house in foreclosure. Right. But from the beginning, let's talk about how that starts. You don't pay your taxes. Mm -hmm. The municipality needs to collect your taxes. So what they do is they auction off the debt and the bidder comes in at an interest rate. They're not bidding the dollar amount, they're bidding the interest rate they're willing to charge. And the lowest bidder is the winner, but there's usually just one bidder, right? right. So the one bidder will come in, he'll pay the $3,000 that you did not pay, and then he's gonna charge you 18% compounded until you pay it. Right. And he has the right to buy all of your future tax notes. So that can go on for many years. And, and as you can see, with that compounding interest, you can get to $50,000 in just a short amount of time. And if a borrower didn't have enough, or if a client didn't have enough money to pay their taxes in the first place, they certainly aren't gonna be able to come up with 50,000, short of selling the house. Right. Right? right. And as I said, when they're seniors, they don't want to sell their house. They, they wait as long as they can. At the two-year mark, when you have not redeemed that debt, when you have not paid that debt off that somebody else has been paying you for, that company or that person that paid it has now the right to foreclose on you. It's a tax foreclosure. It's not a mortgage foreclosure. Right. And it doesn't go through the same process as a mortgage foreclosure. You don't answer your complaints to Trenton. You don't have state mandated mediation. You don't have all the loan modifications because it wasn't a loan. It's not uh, handled by the bank at all. It is directly at the municipal level and you'll get one notice that tells you what day it's going to auction. And you might even think that it's the same as it was before where they were just auctioning off your note and nobody ever did anything. But you might not realize that if you don't show up and if you don't pay that debt, you're just going to lose title to your house that day. It happens very quietly. 
especially for seniors that aren't able to get out and able to get themselves to the county courthouse or wherever they need to go. Do seniors suffer more from tax foreclosures than anyone else and are they always losing their home when they're in a tax foreclosure situation? They're not always losing their house when they're behind on their taxes mm -hmm. until the lien holder decides to file the foreclosure but once that happens there's almost no options for them to get out mm -hmm. but to sell and uh, I you know I had a discussion with an attorney about how many people are losing their house to tax foreclosure are in fact seniors right and I said it's all of them because if a person like myself didn't pay the mortgage my mortgage company would pay my taxes because they want to protect their first lien position Right. Taxes take lien priority. Yes. So they'll always pay the taxes and go after the borrower or add it to the total note in their own foreclosure. Right. But it's only the people that have no mortgage that, that's seniors. that are at risk of tax foreclosures. And yeah, it's always the seniors. It's always the seniors because I don't know anybody under 50 that has their house paid off anymore. <laughs> right. Right? <laughs> right? Right. Okay, so let's talk about another solution, okay. the one that we're focused on, reverse mortgages. It seems complex, seems there's contradictory information out there. Tell us, first of all, what in the world is a reverse mortgage? Well, um, it, it's a government-insured loan, mm -hmm. okay? It came out in 1988. The FHA came out with a safe reverse mortgage. The AARP had lobbied for the government to come out with their own government-insured product and that so that's been out since 1988 and it doesn't matter where you go the FHA controls the mortgage documents the terms for uh, termination the loan is only good for people that are 62 and older and it is good for their entire life as long as they occupy that home the loan does not need to be repaid that's the very unique thing about the reverse mortgage there's no mortgage payment and the way that that works basically is they charge you the interest. Right now the interest rate's below three. Mm -hmm. So, but let's just use uh, a higher rate just as an average, let's say five. Okay. Let's say a borrower owed $100,000 on this particular mortgage. Yeah. Over a year's time, the interest would be about $5,000. Instead of you making payments of $400 a month like you would on a regular equity line, They'll just take that five thousand and add it to what you owe. So this year you owe one hundred, next year you owe one hundred and five, and the next year you owe one hundred and ten. But you're not paying it every month. You're financing the interest instead of paying it, and that's good until you're one hundred and fifty years old if you can make okay, it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Knock wood. We can come out with a cure for cancer, and we can all live longer, right? right. So, but um, it is for borrowers that are 62 years old mm -hmm. and there's no other qualifying criteria there's no minimum credit score which is great for the seniors because well, but now that's interesting yeah. for most loans credit scores we believe they're extremely important they are they <laughs> we're are. told that they are, they are. but why, why not because here? because there's no repayment we're never going to ask them to repay the loan so we don't care what their credit history has been in the past so for all those seniors who believe that credit score would prevent them from finding a solution you're telling us that that's there is a solution without that's wow. right okay. that's right and okay. because there's no payment okay. we don't have to qualify them for income so it doesn't matter if they make six hundred dollars a month in Social Security or sixteen hundred doesn't matter what their income is doesn't matter what their other consumer debt is all of their consumer debt can exceed their income we don't care we don't care because we're not going to ask them for payments on the reverse mortgage ever you can make payments, by the way. There's no prepayment penalty on a government loan. So you could take this loan and sell the house next year and pay it off, and there's no prepayment penalty. But you could also pay it every month. I have borrowers that are in their early 60s and are still working that don't qualify for a traditional loan because of credit. They got in trouble, you know, with maybe their mortgage. Mm -hmm. And they're taking this reverse mortgage because there's no credit requirements but they still want to pay so they pay every month you can you can treat it like a fully amortizing loan you can pay it down if you want and then when you can't you don't ever have to now for a reverse mortgage must you have equity in your home yes or you need to have a down payment. You can also use it to purchase a home, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But you need to establish equity because, as I said, if your loan is 100000 
it's going to grow every year by right. the interest that you're not paying. Mm -hmm. So there needs to be a cushion of equity there for them to ultimately get all of their money. That you know, a lot of customers say to me that it sounds too good to be true, but and I, and I explain to them the bank always gets their money. Don't you worry, because in the end, when that house is sold after the borrower dies or moves or sells the house themselves, the bank is going to get every dollar of what was owed to them. So if you can work with us through a reverse mortgage using some numbers. Okay. So I would say the average borrower has a house that's worth 300000 Okay. Okay. My average borrower is in their 70s, mm -hmm. and the, the loan is based on how old you are, the current interest rate, and the value of your house. Those are the three factors okay. that go into calculating, okay? So the older you are, the more you get because your life expectancy is shorter. Okay. So it, it'll okay. go upside down in a shorter amount of time, you know, okay. basically, right? right? So say a borrower is in their 70s, their house is worth 300, mm -hmm. I'm going to approve them for 200,000. Okay. About two thirds. And, but you, we're assuming that there are no liens against that three hundred thousand dollar home. Well, or? you know, a lot of people think that they can't have existing mortgages when that is the best solution for this foreclosure market. A lot of times, that two hundred thousand will be used to pay off an existing okay. loan. Okay. Okay. If they owe two hundred thousand, they're not going to get any more out of the loan. But we can pay you off their $200,000 mortgage mm -hmm. right at closing, and then they don't have a mortgage payment, and they're not in foreclosure anymore, okay. period. If they had a tax lien that was $70,000 and they had an equity line that was $100,000, we could pay off the $170,000, one fell swoop. They're out of tax sale, they're out of foreclosure, they're good. And further, they don't have to carry that monthly debt going forward. Right. So they're okay. in a much better cash flow position. But for those that uh, would not require the total 200000 to pay off the debt, mm -hmm. then uh, how might those Numbers. might it work for them in, in terms of also being able to draw? The, the, the ideal situation mm -hmm. with um, the reverse mortgage is when a borrower really doesn't owe much at all. Okay. You know, maybe they're just behind on their taxes a few quarters, maybe they only have to pay 10000 from the proceeds and the rest, the you know, hundred and eighty, hundred and seventy thousand dollars that's remaining is available to them in a line of credit, just like you would get an equity line from a bank. You can draw on it for any reason, anytime you want. You never have to repay it. There's no ma monthly payment, right? So they can get it on 48 hours notice, okay. or there are different payment options that seniors can have. They can, they can annuitize it. They can take a monthly payment that's guaranteed for life. That's my favorite because oh, okay. it never runs out. Okay. Even if you totally outlive your expectations, even if you owe more on the house than it was ever worth, the government made a commitment to you to make a $1,000 payment every month, and they're guaranteeing it for life. It's called the 10-year payment. So I like the one that never runs out. And, oh, okay. and also, the seniors can't blow through money. You know, everybody thinks they're going to die next year and, you know, maybe take the family to Europe <laughs> or something ridiculous, right, you know, right, right. Or, or giving it away or paying for this or that. When, when you budget that money on that monthly payment that's guaranteed for life, it, you can only spend $1,000. You can only waste $1,000 at a time. And it's there for you when you're still alive at 103. Okay. How do you qualify for that particular loan? And when, when do you know that that's the right loan for you? When I sit down with my clients right up mm -hmm. front, I'll have all the options in different columns for okay. them. Okay? Okay. So, so they could have all 200000 in a line of credit that they can draw on. And if they'd like to manage their money that way, they can choose that then I'll put it in a 10-year payment. But, you know, every situation is very different. Right, right. So uh, after I sit with them, I'll usually go back a second time with new options because they'll tell me, well, Sandra so-and-so is sick and we need home health care, so we, we can't do the monthly payment and it's not enough. The monthly payment that's guaranteed for life is based on your life expectancy. So it might not be an ample amount of money to pay for home health care if your husband is ill. If you can't help him bathe and you can't, you know, take care of him on your own because you're also elderly, you're, you might need $3,000 a month to have home health care workers come in. The, uh, the other option is to put him in a nursing home at 13000 a month, you know. So you're better off doing it in your house so that you can manage. And, you know, the patients do much better at home, believe me. They're not exposed to all the 
viruses and pneumonias and most of the most of the clients that um, wind up in a nursing home they, they don't they don't live long some say that it's uh, out of will to die because they're not nice places they want to be home they want to look at their trees in the backyard that they planted 50 years ago tell you know? me you you're obviously very good at this and 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 uh, have been working with the government regarding reverse mortgages, but are there still reverse mortgage scams out there and, th and things that people should be able to identify? Um, no. The credit crisis pretty much washed away all of the private reverse mortgages. Okay. It, you know, the private reverse mortgages gave the whole industry a very bad rap, and it, it was before the FHA came out with their own and after. They, they really just disappeared a few years ago. Um, there's no funding for them anymore. 99% or maybe 100% of the loans that are out there are the FHA insured. The FHA calls its product the Home Equity Conversion Mortgage, and, it, and it, that's abbreviated to HECM, H-E-C-M. Okay. So when you see those words, you know that the government is insuring that loan. Okay, and that insurance is very important. It causes the, the closing costs to be high at closing, which are financed in, but nevertheless, it's a cost that we'll talk about. And you know, you have to decide if you want to take this loan based on the cost too. But they take that insurance up front so that later, if the house is upside down in value, if you owe more than the house is worth at, because you lived and lived, um, or maybe the value of the house went down, which we've just seen in recent years, right. the FHA insurance covers any deficiency. So they call this loan a no recourse loan, meaning that it stands alone on this house, doesn't affect any other assets in the estate. I had an accountant that loved it because there are two other houses that they don't want encumbered by mortgages. And they, they took a reverse on mom's house, and they know that if that goes upside down, it won't affect the other two houses. Mm -hmm. And so the estate, it just stands alone on that house. But the FHA insurance covers the difference. And as I said before, the bank always gets their money. If it did go upside down, if you owed 300000 and you could only sell it for 200000 after the house, you know, when, when it was sold, the FHA pays the lender the difference. The lender cannot lose any money on this loan. So they're very generous in their approvals. Pretty much everybody can you, be approved. You, you keep raising more questions for me, but mm -hmm. we're running out of time, and I wanted you to talk about one thing which most of us don't understand, is that can you use a reverse mortgage to purchase a home? Yes. In Explain 2009, it. the FHA said, instead of making the seniors sell their big house, buy a new house in cash, and then get a reverse later and have two sets of closing costs, we're going to change the program and we're going to allow it for a purchase money mortgage. So the purchase money mortgage now is the same ratio of loan. So a $300,000 house, you can get a $200,000 reverse mortgage with no payment, no credit checks, no anything. Um, and you can finance the purchase of a new house, which makes it so easy for seniors to now get out of the big house that's strangling them with taxes and maintenance. And they can buy something, they can buy their downsizing option and finance it, even though they had credit problems, even though they don't have income to show, to qualify, like you or I right. that are working. Right. So, you know, it really is a very unknown fact about reverse mortgages, but as the realtors begin to realize that you can use it as a purchase money mortgage, they're realizing that it's going to help them sell houses, buy houses, move the market. I call, and instead of first time home buyers, I call them our last time home buyers. And they're market movers. The demographics of baby boomers is outstanding, wow. 78 million. Well, unfortunately, we have run out of time and this has been extremely helpful. I wish we had more time, but thank you. Thank you for having me.